The weekly Coaches News Conference on KLPS-TV is brought to you by Hawthorne Bank, a proud sponsor of Liberty School District. At Hawthorne Bank, we understand the importance of strong community in a strong school district. We also understand the importance of strong financial future for our school district's families and for our local businesses. Hawthorne Bank, with you every step. And by Jackson Hewitt. For all your tax needs, personal or business, rely on tax professionals at Jackson Hewitt and Liberty, a full-service tax preparation professional. Jackson Hewitt. Thank you for coming in. Um, we've played, uh, varsity-wise, we've played three games where it's uh, one and two on the year. Um, got a good victory on Sunday night in the Norm Stewart Classic, which is a really cool event that we got invited to this year. Kind of a, an event with a little bit of prestige to it. Um, tries to get some of the better teams from, from the state to come together in Columbia. And so we went down there on Sunday night and um, played a Troy Buchanan team that um, two years ago was in the big class state championship. So um, some good competition for us. Three class five teams to start. You know, if you look at the NBCA polls that were released yesterday, um, you know, our class five team that we played, Fort Osage is ranked sixth and class five Rockhurst is ranked seventh. Um, and then, you know, the Troy Buchanan team solid. Um, then our JV guys have uh, won two in a row and done a really good job kind of bouncing back, um, getting used to playing together. The bottom line is everybody's getting used to playing together. It's been a while since uh, you know we, we, we've been, been able to get in competition. We've been practicing against each other for a month, but it's good to finally have some competition, and I think the guys are, are doing a, a fine job with it. So uh, we're excited for our tournament this week, um, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, hopefully for us. Start out uh, versus the Cameron team tonight. That's solid. A um, couple really good players, really good shooters. Uh, Going to have to play well. So um, we're excited for the week. Busy week. So by the time I talk to you guys next week, we'll have six games in, um, which is about a fourth of our season in about two weeks. So crazy how fast it's going already. But uh, with that, open it up to questions. Um, how did your team respond to losing your first game and so close to the score? Yeah, uh, good question. We, you know, and I don't know how much of the game you saw, but, you know, I mean, we had plenty of opportunities to win it, too. So it wasn't that, you know, we were down by 10 points, we fought back and then hit a shot at the buzzer and made the score look close. I mean, we had plenty of opportunities to win. We were, we were just horrific from the free throw line and pretty bad taking care of the ball. And, um, you know, you never want to lose, but when it's early in the season, you kind of think as a coach some of that stuff might happen. And uh, so... I mean, your question's a good one. How did we respond? We responded well. You know, I mean, our guys were good at practice on Wednesday and Thursday, and we had a pretty good focus going into Friday. And, you know, I didn't do the best job in the world of having them prepared because Rock played a style that um, I've known Coach Nussbaum for a while. Um, and, uh, I don't know, be like a vegetarian eating meat. I mean, they're, they're pressing and they're, they're doing all kinds of different stuff. So, um, you know, we, we struggled against them, but then we bounced back well on Sunday. Our guys are pretty tough. They're pretty resilient and a um, um, bunch of good kids, so it helps. Um, and we were able to bounce back and, you know, get one on Sunday, which then hopefully, you know, the longer you go without winning, the more pressure it builds. So I think it takes a little bit of pressure off of us. So um, you want to speak a little bit to your guys' effort as far as, you know, how hard they've been playing through those first two losses and, you know, continuing to move forward? Well, one of the things I like to say is, you know, we might not play well, but nobody can say we don't play hard. <laughs> and and I think that anybody that sees our guys play, um, they see how hard our guys play. You know, on, on the year, we've outscored our opponents in the fourth quarter um, by about eight points per right now, so about 24 total points. And that, that shows that we're trying to play a complete game. And I don't know if it's a conditioning thing that, you know, our guys are in good shape and, and they're able to overcome things or or if it's just that, you know, we can focus a little bit more coming that time. But 
you know, I think it's a daily habit. I think it's something that we try to do every day at practice um, to, to form those habits so that, you know, they're used to playing, um, playing as hard as they can. You know, if we practice for an hour and a half, the last 20 minutes doesn't mean we can just, you know, screw around. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, that's time for us to get better. And, um, you know, the first quarter is just as important as the fourth quarter, but um, nobody can say that these guys don't have a lot of fight in them. And I think over the long run, that's going to really benefit us because we're playing a schedule early uh, to hopefully prepare us and get us set for late. How has your team responded after losing Garrett Rose? Well, they've responded well. Um, you know, Garrett was such an important piece up for us for, for a million different reasons. Um, but they've responded well, but, but maybe not as active as we would like him to be as far as kind of uh, taking that role. We don't want anybody and we don't need anybody to be Garrett. We need people to have some of Garrett's characteristics, if that makes sense. You know, we don't need somebody to, we don't need somebody, I mean, Garrett's just unbelievable. I mean, you know, we lose, um, uh, or we beat Oak Park a Tuesday night in February and then don't play for the next nine days. I've given the guys the next day off, and Garrett calls me at 11 o'clock that night because he wants to come in and shoot at 5.30 the next morning because he didn't shoot well. You know, I mean, I don't expect all our guys to be like that, and I wouldn't sleep because they'd always want to be in the gym. But, um, you know, the guys are, the guys are, he, he was so special, but the guys are really starting to form this team as their own. Each team has an identity, you know, for, for different things, and it's a reflection usually of your guys that are your leaders and, um, we got a group of guys with nine seniors um, and a couple of juniors and a soft that have played for us that, that they're developing an identity that's that's fun and and it's different and uh, as the year goes on I think it'll I think it'll show itself to be to be a pretty genuine team a team that really cares about each other and they're they're a good group to be around. What is the obstacle you'll be facing in the tournament this week? Well, the teams we're playing. Uh, we got a good field. We got a really good field. St. Joe Central and St. Pius are on the other side of our bracket. And um, I think Pius is a really, really good team. They've got some seniors, and I've seen those guys play for a couple years. Um, Kaufman kid, the Mason kid, they're, they're, they're pretty good. Um, and then St. Joe Central's got a – they lost a tough one on Friday to Blue Springs, so they'll be hungry to bounce back. Um, Cameron is – in my opinion, Cameron's one of the best screening teams we play all year. Park Hill South's getting a lot of publicity uh, uh, for their win on Friday night. I mean, they won by, they almost doubled up. North Kansas City, they won 71-36. Um, they're pretty good and they're playing a new style, so they're only going to get better as the year goes on. Um, Carney's Conference, so we're familiar with them. We know what they've got. Oak Park's rebuilding under Ryan Nichols and, and Pembroke Hill, you know, I mean, they girls team came into our tournament last night and got our girls by a couple points in double overtime and pretty good game. So, um, you know, the competition, the field, excuse me, the field that we have is, is the biggest obstacle. Uh, and then the second thing would be the amount of time uh, that, that, you know, we've played three games and now we got to turn around and we've got to play three more this week. So, um, you know, making sure our guys are fresh and, and, and we're keeping them fresh physically and mentally. Well, you know, play to an identity, play to a style. Um, we've got a style, we've got a way that we like to play, and we want to we want to focus on that um, because we don't have a ton of time to to get a ton of scout report stuff done. You know, I mean, we we play Sunday, so we spent 20 minutes in the film room and 10 minutes on the floor walking through Cameron. Uh, if we're able to win tonight, then we'll do the same thing with St. Joe Central. For Thursday, you know, on Wednesday for Thursday, and then if we get Thursday, then we'll bring the guys in Friday after school for ten minutes. So, you know, we don't have a lot of time to really focus on the opponent. We got to focus on our style and our system, and make sure we're pretty efficient and effective out of it. Um, but then the other thing is, you know, just make sure that we're we're communicating with each other because because fatigue is an issue. So, you know, we can't be selfish if we're tired. We got to tell the coach, we got to tell teammates so we can come out of the game. Um, you know, if we're hurt, we've got some, you know, some dings. We don't need to be out there, take, you know, playing and taking away time from another guy because we have some depth. We've got some guys that, that have stepped up 
through three games and will continue to step up to play. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting to try to find some playing time for some guys that deserve some playing time. Um, so those are things that, that we'll focus on this week. Um, and, then, and then after we get done on Friday, we'll be able to take a step back because we don't play again until the next Saturday. We'll be able to take a step back and really evaluate where we're at, what, if we need to tweak anything. Uh, and at this point, I don't feel like we need to tweak anything too major. Um, but see what we got to do and then, and then go on uh, a week from Saturday down to the Hy-Vee shootout and play, um, play a good McPherson team. Play a good McPherson team. I'm going to go behind you, Ryan. Well, you know, I'd say we got to play to an identity, so you ask a really good question. Um, I'd like to think that the identity of our team is that we're tough and we're unselfish. I'd like to think that those are the two biggest things. Um, and tough isn't, you know, tough isn't um, if you and I fought, I could beat you up. That's not tough. <laughs> you know, tough is, tough is um, Ryan's point earlier about, you know, how your guys fight through the entire game, play through the fourth quarter. That's tough. Uh, you know, being able to play through four quarters. Tough is being able to play when you're down. Tough is having five turnovers as a player and then making sure you don't have a sixth. Um, and then unselfish is, um, you know, we tell our guys this all the time, we'd, you know, would you rather win state or be all state? And if you're unselfish, you want to win the state championship. You're not concerned about yourself being on the all state team. Um, and our guys have embraced that. So I think those are the two biggest things that we identify with with our guys is that they try to be a a, a tough group mentally and physically um, and then the, they're an unselfish group and, and take care of each other and, and you know we're concerned about the team success over the individual success. Ryan. You spoke about how you're, you're playing so many games here early in the season and so I'm sure that's uh, leading to a, kind of a lack of practice time so how's that affecting you guys and how you prepare? Um, well we knew this going in, so as a staff, we had to, we planned to make sure that the practices we had leading up to our first game kind of encompassed everything we needed for the first two weeks. Um, and so that's our, that's our job, is to make sure that that's the case. We can't just prepare for the first game and then all of a sudden realize, boy, we got to prepare for this, that, or the other thing, and we don't have any time. So, you know, that's part of, that's part of planning, part of making sure we're leading the right way. And, um, and the other thing is, uh, you know, we, we trust our guys quite a bit, and we know that they're, they're a team that's going to be able to correct on the fly, um, make some changes, do some things that they, they need to so that we don't have to worry so much about missing a, a ton of practice time. Um, that's all the time we've got for today. I hope that we can, we'll see you all out at our tournament this week, um, both guys and girls throughout the rest of the week. Some good games, some good competition. Um, uh, you know, we appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you this week. Thanks.